said, you sound like a violent guy here. Is this like a? <laughs> are you buddies with Chuck Liddell? Is that what the problem is? Yeah, actually, I am. You know, That's what we heard. Yeah. Yeah. He. Uh, when every time he gets a little ticked off at me for giving him a hard time, he might put me in some little hole that I don't know, and they'll tell me some move, and like, this is what this is called. I'm like, why do you call it that? Because it hurts, and it feels like that when they're doing it to you. I'm like, ah, whatever. So you watch Dance with the Stars, though, so I can't really uh Yeah, you like that? Complain. I got to tell you, um, I think he's going to be horrible. I'll tell him, too. He, he knows us because we cover a lot of UFC. I yeah. think he's going to – he may be one of the worst ever. I don't, I I don't think he has rhythm. His voicemail. <laughs> I've seen him dance before. Hey, how is he, how is he going to do this? See, the thing is different is different with with that kind of dancing is that those are moves that you can learn, whereas having natural rhythm is a little different. You can kind of fake it because okay. some of the people that have been on that show are a little stiff, a little rigid, but they show some kind of progress through the show. Yeah, um, I'm, you know what? I'm going back to Jerry Springer. He could have been there all year; it wouldn't have mattered. And there's a lot yeah. of guys like that, and, I, and I'm probably one of them. So. I think yeah, I think he's going to be awful. I mean, I've seen him; he's good at clubs. I've yeah. seen that. You know, yeah. he's good at having like four women in his arms and making out with them and stuff like oh, that. But but that's different, you know. Yeah. yeah, and it's you know it's easy to dance to some of the club songs. But this hopefully is... they'll pick the samba for him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what do you think is going to happen with him? With his uh, fight career, because I've said pretty much since he lost, I'm like he's coming back. He has another tr- fight on his contract, you know, and, and I know that he always gets a good payday. So from a uh, political standpoint, I know Dana White probably wants to get him back in the ring with somebody. From a money standpoint, <laughs> yeah, from a money standpoint. <laughs> and I, I know he's got some fight left in him. You know, he's been pretty upset about his last couple of losses, but uh, I think if he gets to you know focus on his right training and he gets in there and really goes after, I know he can do some damage. I mean, I'm not going to get in the ring with the guy. No, I don't care if he's 50. I'm not. Gonna <laughs> well, he, he still has a knockout punch. We know that. Yeah. So you go to the events. Yeah, I try to go to all the ones that are in off season. Yeah, you we go schedule fights during our season. Where so. have you gone? Uh, mostly to Vegas. I've been in the. Um, I went to the Montreal fight as well. Did you? Yeah. What do you think of that? What do you think of Anderson Silva in the main event? He's amazing. Wow. Yeah, the yeah. crowd wasn't too happy though that day. This last main event, I he mean, was ridiculous. Yeah, he's trying to do a little bit for the for the show of it. Yeah. You know, trying to help the, trying to be a company guy, so to speak. But uh, I mean, he's he's so good. Sometimes you gotta let a little cockiness out. He's he's really good. He's very humble. Uh, I've I've seen him. You know, after he's beaten people to yeah. a, a pulp, he get down, you know, and you know, congratulate them and speak highly of them. He, I mean, even after Forrest, he before still spoke highly of him. And stuff he tried like to so. before Forrest right out of the ring through yeah. the crowd. So you know Liddell for how long now? Uh, I've known Chuck since uh, since I was about eighteen, back since 1998 when I started out at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Was he around Cal Poly a lot? Uh, yeah, he had a gym out there called Slow Kickboxing, and uh, he was teaching classes over there. And he was still training. Uh, he was MMA career was uh, starting. Uh, it was starting back then, so uh, he was around town a lot. Yeah. Did you ever go in there to actually train? No, I, he actually came to one of my classes. Uh, I was a kinesiology major uh, at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, and uh, he came to one of my combative classes, and he was giving some lessons on how to do a uh, proper kick. And uh, he kicked the bag and knocked me over. No. Yeah, yeah, he's got some. He got some powerful legs. Wait, so. Uh, so in one of your classes, he was actually kind of a guest instructor. Yeah, we had a lot of guest instructors from around town, uh, different martial arts, and uh, he was he was given a, a little sermon on how to kick properly. And yeah, yeah. So what what, uh, what drew you to him early on? Uh, you know, when you when you met him, what kind of forged the friendship? Oh, uh, he was just a humble guy, and we had a lot of uh, mutual friends. And uh, everybody just says that he was such a cool guy. And uh, when I got a chance to hang out with him, you know, he was just you know down to earth, uh, you know, very very talkative, friendly, and uh, just he was hilarious too, the jokester. Yeah. So. Around the NFL, how, how aware of guys are our guys of MMA? I mean, are, are there fans in the locker room? I mean, how big a sport is it with you guys? Oh, heavily. I mean, we're all talking about the fights, and we're, we're betting on who's going to win. And, uh, I mean, pretty much everybody on the team is, is very he- heavily into it. I mean, every, everybody orders it at their house, and uh, they come back the next day, and we're all talking about it on uh, Sundays. I, you know what? I know some players have come in, and uh, not players, but some of the fighters have come in and actually spoken to NFL teams. Like, I know Couture, I think, spoke to a couple, maybe the Seahawks and the Packers. Is there a correlation between the two sports uh, just as far as the training you know it's a really really intense training you know and it can wear your body down and uh, you just have to have the mental fortitude to be able to handle the training as well as the game uh, well as well as a match for them and uh, be able to uh, persevere through your adversities you know when you lose a fight you go through all that training whereas in football is only 16 games so when you lose a game it's like it's heavy impact on you would you actually try it the MMA training hell no I like the way I look I'm gonna keep my face intact and keep my helmet on you know Matt Leonard did it right do you did I don't know if you saw that there was a video no he Oh, he did the training. Yeah, he didn't fight. Yeah, he's not fighting. I don't think he'd get in that, that ring with some of them guys. Some guys with that cauliflower ear, man, they're not playing. Yeah. You know what's funny about Leonard is that uh, he actually trained in Arizona at a place called Arizona Combat Sports with Jay Glazer, of all guys, the NFL reporter. Yeah, I know Jay. I'm a pretty good friend with Jay. Uh, Jay, he's uh, Jay's intense. He, he's powerful, too. And he's not afraid to give you a kick in your leg and let you know that this is what the sport's all about. So I kind of I keep my distance from around him. So he's like the number one fighting NFL insider, I guess. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, Jay, Jay's a good crossover artist. <laughs> so do you have a favorite fighter aside from Chuck? 
I, I like I like Chuck a lot. Um, some of the guys that work with Chuck are pretty good too. Uh, Scott Light, he's a good guy. Uh, he's a strong fighter. Uh, I'm a huge fan of um, G uh, GSP. His work ethic, I think, you know, he overcomes a lot of adversity and uh, a lot of doubters. A lot of people were, were saying he couldn't do it, and you know, he, he managed to overcome. So I, I give him a lot of respect for his work ethic. One last one. Did you watch the fight with uh, Brock Lesnar at 100? Yeah, I did. I mean, you know, if, if a guy's going to sit there and talk trash to another guy, you know, and, and, and your, your profession is fighting, I mean, it's only right for him to say something back after the fight. You know, I don't think it's that bad that they're making out to be. You know, he won the fight. The guy was talking trash to him. So, you know, he could have reclaimed his title.